Now, the world looked on this week as, at long last, a massive pain in the arse was finally finished off in full glare of the media spotlight in a morally questionable way. Most people listening are probably thinking of the extrajudicial killing of Colonel Gaddafi, but I imagine that if anyone is listening from the small market town I grew up in, or any other small market town for that matter, you may have been thinking of the eviction of the travellers at Dale Farm. You see, I'm sort of programmed to hate gypsies, presumably thanks to genetic mutations in the incredibly limited gene pool where I grew up. But thankfully reason has transcended this and I'm now a member of the Right On PC Brigade, which is why the Dale Farm eviction is troubling as Adam Jacobs explains in this next report. This week, a planning dispute which had been rumbling on for many years finally reached the end of its legal process. A group of Irish travellers on the Dale Farm site near Basildon in Essex had built some dwellings on a former scrapyard site, which they own, without planning permission. Now that the legal battle over this has come to an end, with the courts confirming that the site had no planning permission, Basildon Council can lawfully remove the illegally constructed buildings. And as I record this on Thursday, they're doing so as part of a multi-million pound operation involving bailiffs and police. The buildings were constructed illegally, so of course it's perfectly right and proper that they're now being removed. It's really as simple as that. End of story. This has been Adam Jacobs, reporting for the Daily Mail. Oh, sorry, wait, what's that you say, little voice in my earpiece? This is for the Pod Delusion, not the Daily Mail. And you tell me that Pod Delusion listeners are a sceptical bunch who may not believe me if I say it's really as simple as that? Ah, OK. Well, in that case, I guess perhaps I should go on and look at some of the reasons why it might not actually be quite as simple as that. Let's start with looking at the planning permission. The argument that it's really as simple as that would carry more weight if breaches of planning law were dealt with even-handedly, with all breaches facing the same robust enforcement action we've seen at Dale Farm, irrespective of whether those breaching the law were a vulnerable minority group or a rich and powerful corporation. It took me about five seconds of googling to find a news story about a Tesco store that opened in Stockport in 2004, which was larger than the size of store that had been granted planning permission. The council then denied retrospective planning permission for the extra size. Can you guess what happened next? Do you think they sent the bailiffs in to tear down the store? Well, I won't spoil the ending for you. I'm sure you can find the ending yourself if you google for it. And that, as I say, was with five seconds of Googling. I'm pretty sure that this wasn't the only time that companies like Tesco have breached planning laws. Now, the Dale Farm site is technically on Greenbelt land, and that seems to have been the main justification Basildon Council have given for refusing planning permission. However, it is the site of a former scrapyard, and indeed part of the site does have planning permission, so even if the illegal part were to be removed, a traveller community would still remain. There are some pretty shocking statistics out there when you look at how the gypsy and traveller community are treated by the planning system. One widely quoted statistic is that 90% of planning applications from the gypsy and traveller community are initially rejected, compared with only 20% overall. That's actually a little bit misleading, because many of those 90% that are initially rejected are subsequently granted on appeal. But still, 90% versus 20% is pretty dramatic, and it's hard to believe that there isn't some sort of discrimination at work here. Now, I know anecdotes are not data and all that, but I have seen anti-gypsy discrimination from a local council official at first hand. A couple of years ago, the bin in which the rubbish from my office gets put disappeared mysteriously from our car park. As this was more or less at exactly the same time that the bin men from Merton Council came to collect it, I thought perhaps the council had taken it away. When we contacted them to ask, they denied this and said, as I later discovered on the basis of pure speculation, that it had probably been stolen by gypsies. Think about that for a minute. How would it sound if Merton Council had said, it was probably stolen by some black guys? I don't think anyone would think that was acceptable, would they? I contacted the Chief Executive of Merton Council with my concerns about this, but he wasn't in the least bit interested. This kind of behaviour makes me find it easy to believe that anti-gypsy prejudice may be endemic in local councils. 
Whether gypsies and travellers constitute a race is controversial, although the question has been tested in the English courts in the context of race discrimination legislation, and the courts have decided that they do. But I'm not sure it's that important whether you call anti-gypsy discrimination racism or not. It's still discrimination against a minority group. There are, of course, important differences between discrimination against black people and discrimination against the gypsy and traveller community. While one is racism pure and simple, the other is connected to the lifestyle that gypsies and travellers lead. This lifestyle, involving caravans that may stay in one place for much of the time but sometimes move around the country, is something that most people find strange. I certainly find it strange. You probably do too. But there's an important question here about the extent to which society should be tolerant of alternative lifestyles. I don't think that finding a particular lifestyle strange is a good enough reason to deny it to people who choose to follow it. However, it's quite common to hear allegations of antisocial behaviour from traveller sites. Stories of rubbish left behind, petty theft, travellers having a shit in someone's front garden and so on. It's very hard to know how common these problems are. No doubt some are genuine, but they may be talked up as part of anti-traveller sentiment. But even if significant antisocial behaviour from travellers is a problem, is that a good reason for collective punishment? Unless we believe that all members of the travelling community are guilty of such behaviour, wouldn't the more rational response be to seek out those individuals responsible and punish them in the normal way? I really don't think this is a simple issue. We should be tolerant of alternative lifestyles. We don't need to be tolerant of lifestyles that are clearly antisocial. The argument that leaving great big piles of rubbish behind on traveller sites needs to be respected as part of a different culture doesn't convince me. The majority in a society has a right to expect minorities to conform to certain standards of behaviour, but does not have the right to expect them to behave like the majority in every way. Where you draw the line is, of course, a massive grey area. Anyway, it's pretty clear that a great many people don't want to have gypsy and traveller sites anywhere near them. You only have to look at the Dale Farm hashtag on Twitter to see that anti-traveller prejudice is rampant. Comments such as, fuck off pikey scum, are frighteningly common. If those sentiments are widespread in real life as well, then perhaps it's not surprising that planning permission for traveller sites is frequently denied by the planning process, which, at least in theory, is controlled democratically through our elected representatives in local government. It's quite possible that a majority of residents in any local area don't want a gypsy site near them, so to refuse planning permission is democratic. That doesn't, however, make it right. It seems to me to be a classic example of what the 19th century political theorist Alexis de Tocqueville described as the tyranny of the majority. What I think it boils down to is that we're discriminating against a group of people because they follow a lifestyle that most people find strange. The eviction at Dale Farm has turned into a full-scale media circus, which I think is massively unhelpful, and is probably only serving to make any divisions between the traveller and settled communities even more entrenched. It's attracted a number of so-called supporters, whose motivations for protesting at the site are not clear to me. Some may genuinely want to help, but there's a definite feel of rent a mob about some of the things I've seen, and it's interesting to note that all the people arrested during the eviction were outside protesters, not Dale Farm residents. While I completely understand the Dale Farm residents' frustration with the way the planning process is stacked against them, and completely support their right to peaceful protest and resistance of the eviction, some of the protests have been unacceptably violent, involving such things as throwing bricks at the police. Even if that's happening despite the protests of the Dale Farm residents, it's really not helping their case in the court of public opinion. Banners talking about ethnic cleansing are also unhelpful. While I think the eviction is horribly wrong on many levels, let's not forget that, despite the legalities, families are having their homes forcibly removed. It's not even remotely comparable to what happened in Bosnia in the 1990s, which is what most people would understand by ethnic cleansing. All in all, I find this whole episode terribly sad. A minority group is clearly facing intolerable discrimination, and it doesn't look like that discrimination is going away any time soon. The eviction is widely reported to be costing £18 million, which hardly seems a good use of Basildon council taxpayers' money. 
I'm pretty sure that there must have been other solutions to the problem that didn't involve hugely expensive forced evictions. But sadly, the politicians of Basildon Council have judged that 